Are you looking for a quick, super easy way to seriously impact your pet's health? Come with me as we make meals for our dogs. I'm talking like 10 to 15 minutes once or twice a week. We will walk through this together so you can learn and understand why it's so incredibly important for our furry family members. You and your pet will be glad you did. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Jen Lee and you are along with me on my gentastic journey through early retirement as we discuss our pet's health, well-being, and living their best lives. I have rescued five fur babies and they will be along with us to give us some cuteness as we do so. Now let's get to today's project. Before we get started, full disclosure, I am not a vet. I have been doing this for 10 years and have seen the great impact it's had on the health of my dogs. Plus, they absolutely love it. And I promise I'll show you their reaction to the dog food later on. Most of you know that dogs are carnivores and their teeth are constructed in a way that want them to tear at meat. We're gonna make sure that they have a predominantly carnivore food. So, Let's take a look at some of the ingredients that you'll need. We'll start with the proteins. Now this will vary. The proteins can really vary as to what your pets prefer. Also what you have in stock. This is supposed to be easy. This is no different than cooking for your family. Whatever you have in the freezer will work. For today, I am using pork. I use ground pork because it's just a little bit simpler for me to make, but you can use a pork roast. Um, you can use chicken, beef. I also will occasionally bring in fish. I don't make it as the main ingredient, but I do incorporate fish um, just to give them a little bit of variety. There's also some of the expensive meats like veal or lamb, and I will occasionally bring that in. In fact, today I've got a little bit of veal that I'm just going to add this in to give them a little bit more variety. And again, this is just like cooking for your family. If you have time to do that, if you have the time with the creativity or the extra stuff, um, or you're trying to get some things out of your freezer. I also use sardines. Sardines are a great source of protein fats. These happen to be skinless and boneless, but it's only what I had on hand, but you can use the one with bones and that's a great source of calcium as well. And then last for the proteins, I have some liver. Dogs love any sort of organ meat and it's extremely good for them. Today we're going to use some calf liver, a very inexpensive form of organ meat, and it's what I have on hand. You see that as a theme. And so vegetables, as you can see, I use big bags just because that's what's easy for me. I get this bag at Costco and it has all the types vegetables that I prefer. About 10 to 20 percent of the vegetable section of the dog food is usually cruciferous vegetables. This one also has carrots and squash which are very good for dogs as well. So this one is a great blend. This is called Normandy style and you can find this in much smaller bags as well in the grocery store. Extra ingredients can be things like cranberries, blueberries, and some of the sardines that I mentioned. Sometimes if I have other canned salmon, something like that on hand is that as well. You just want to make sure you get mostly salt-free items. That's, dogs are very sensitive to salt and we want to minimize the amount of salt that's in their food. Another special ingredient that I typically use, I would say 99% of the time, is bone broth. Just like for our health, bone broth is a great ingredient that I use to cook for my family, but for the dogs, um, you want to make sure you get unsalted bone broth. Again, salt is very hard on the systems of dogs, so we want to minimize that salt as much as possible. But this just gives them some extra vitamins and minerals, and it also gives some of liquid. Another thing I use is wild blueberries. This is a big bag again. I get this from Costco. So these will help, but they have inherently weepy eyes. Also using filtered water is a super big help for that as well. We have all the ingredients, so let's get putting them into the crock pot. All right, I've wrapped my crock pot here. I also have a silicone liner that's in my crock pot and that's a super big time saver for me. It makes cleanup real easy. As I'm getting some of these ingredients into the crock pot, I want to tell you a little bit more about myself and some of the reasons why we're using some of these ingredients. 
For those of you who don't know me yet, I'm Jen, and you are part of my gentastic journey into financial freedom and semi-retirement. I hope to encourage you all with what I've learned over the last 10 years in feeding my dogs home-cooked meals. My pets are a huge part of my life, and for all the pet lovers out there, welcome to my channel. Uh, we have five dogs, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I kind of got involved with that. All of our dogs are dogs that we've rescued, and again, we'll get into that. We get putting stuff into the crock pot, putting the vegetables in at the bottom of the crock pot, and then laying the meat on top. While I'm doing this, let's talk about why we cook for our dogs. We have so many competing priorities that why would we add this to an already busy lifestyle, right? Simply put, it's the health of our dogs. We love these furry parts of our family, and if you're like me, you want to do whatever you can to keep them as healthy as possible. And it really saves you down the line, less vet visits and things like that. But the other reason is because as we get into this, the dogs absolutely love this food. While I have proven results, and I'll share those with you, we also absolutely go crazy for this food. At one point in time, my husband and I had to try and coax our dogs to eat and hand feed when we were feeding them commercial dry dog food. And that gets old really fast when you have five dogs. And we also RV with our dogs, so it gets a little crazy when you have to be hand feeding and coaxing your dogs to eat. You want to go out and sort of explore wherever you travel. Most of our dogs were rescued from a puppy mill. Their health was questionable. Who knows what they were eating, what their lifestyle was like. They were just kept around to breed. When I bring the dogs to vets initially and see what it is that they have going on with their health, then I start to feed them. My gently cooked food that we're making today here. Within, I would say, six months for most of my dog, we just saw all of their numbers that were kind of in the red move into the green. And it's just such a good feeling to know that something as simple as cooking for them can make that big of an impact on them. All right, as I'm finishing up with the ingredients, this takes me about 15 to 20 minutes. Every three days or so, I'm cooking for my dogs because I do have five of them. I would say that you want to cook enough so that you're going to have about three to five days worth of food available for you so that you're not doing this all the time. You don't really want to keep food around for longer than that. So let's put the last of the protein in here. I usually put the liver on top. Then I put about a cup of the bone broth in there just to give that a lot of nutrients. That's really what I do to get started. And then we're going to put this crock pot on low couple of things before we get this cooking. First of all, I buy all of my ingredients from the grocery store, just like I do the ingredients for my family's food. A lot of you that may be more organic or like to purchase from local butchers or things like that, feel free to make this as exciting as you want to make it. For me and my family, I really primarily purchased from the grocery store. I purchase things when they're on sale. I put them in the freezer. As soon as I've cooked one batch, I then take the ingredients out of the freezer and put them in the refrigerator so that when I'm ready to use them, they're already thawed out. However, if you forget to do that, as I've been known to do, you can put frozen meat in a crock pot, just like you would with your own cooked meals. You're going to need to cook it a little bit longer. So instead of the seven to eight hours that I normally use, I would cook it a full 10 hours. Okay. I have set the crock pot for eight hours on low temperature. If you're cooking for one dog and you have a lot less food in here, then that would be something that would change the amount of time. Again, we're going to gently cook food. And there'll be some, some of you out there that are wondering why gently cooked. Because there's a lot of different thoughts around how to cook dog food for your pets. I use a crock pot, number one, because it's super easy. Like I said, it takes me about 20 minutes if I'm not talking all the way through this. And I put the, all the ingredients in, I set it, and I walk away and just do the rest of my day. And then I'll show you later how, once it's all cooked, how I prepare the food and put it in the refrigerator. And then we divvy it out at each meal for our dogs. So it's a very simple, very quick process. 
process for me and I really kind of enjoy it as well. So why I use Gently Cooked is because quite honestly the results I get and not only the excitement of my dogs eating this food but also the results of their blood work and how healthy they've been. I've gotten most of my King Charles Cavaliers and all three of them have come to us with various health conditions. Two of them have mitral valve disease and that is something that doesn't go away, but you can definitely prevent it from getting worse. So that's really what I've seen over the years is that I've been able to kind of take dogs that have conditions that are bad for their health and improve that. And gently cooked food seems to work really well for me. Some of you may have heard a lot about feeding your dogs raw food. I have read a lot about it. I've researched a lot about it. And while I think there are definitely pros and cons, and if you're doing it, fantastic. Do what works best for you and your pet. I don't judge one way or another. It's definitely better than commercial dog food. But for me, again, I'm gonna use what works for me. This fits in my lifestyle. It also works well for my dogs that I have results. I'll link in the comments the video where I show the blood work and how this has impacted my dogs so tremendously. While we're going to let this cook and I'm going to put the top on here to keep everything nice and warm and moist, let's talk a little bit about some of the questions I often get when people ask me about feeding my dogs home-cooked food. First of all, they say, you know, the, the dry food or the canned food that you get in the stores have all the necessary ingredients that your dog needs. Aren't you worried that they don't have the right mix of ingredients that you'd have in those commercially made dog foods? And the answer is, no, I'm not worried about it. Again, I've been doing this for 10 years and my dogs have become much more healthy than they were when I was feeding them commercial dog food. To me, commercial dog food is a little bit like kind of going out to a fast food restaurant every night for the dogs. It's got questionable ingredients and trust me, I was purchasing very expensive dog food before I started cooking my own food. So I've actually saved money by going to this process. No matter kind of at, if you look at the ingredient list, it's still processed, right? So similar for our diets, we want to try and stay away from too many processed foods and I feel like I'm doing the same with this for my dogs so that's critically important for me. Do I supplement? That's a question I get as well and I do. Again I have three King Charles Cavaliers and if those of you that know the breed know that, that they're kind of an unhealthy breed they are a great breed. They're definitely lap dogs and they're fun and cuddly. I also have two lab mixes again rescues so I'm not really sure what's in them but I've got a black lab and then a chocolate lab as well. The chocolate lab and the black lab have much less issues when it comes to their health. My black lab looks very strong and lean and muscular and my chocolate lab as well. She's just a little bit getting a little bit older. I see some of those things with her but supplementation is typically something that I do for the specific dogs. Some of the supplements that I use that are for all the dogs you'll find me putting in here at the end and I'll go through that with you. But primarily what I put in here is a very good mineral supplement that are made for dogs. So a canine mineral supplement and I'll link the one that I use. And I've been using that one for several years now. It is recommended by a holistic vet that I follow. Very important for a lot of your pet's health that you have the right mineral mix. Also, I use a vitamin supplement. It's made by the same company and it's a powder and I just sprinkle that on at the end after everything's cooked. You can also do that on a case-by-case -case basis as you divvy up your food to the dog. I will show all the supplements that I use for my pets in another video and I'll link that below as well. There are things that you do not want to include out there that are dangerous to pets in fact and so I'm going to include that list, a list that I've done through my research. It may not be an all-inclusive list, so make sure you do your research as well. Let's let this cook for now, and then we'll be back to talk about the next step in the process. Welcome back. I hope you had a productive day as we waited patiently for our crock pot to finish cooking our dog's food. I promised you this would be simple and easy and this certainly was. We literally spent 10 minutes throwing our ingredients in here, set it to low temperature for six to eight hours depending on how much food you had in your crock pot, and now we're ready to take the next step. What I did is I unplugged this about an hour ago just to let it cool off to make it a little easier on me, prevent any burns, <laughs> things like that. Also, it makes it a little bit easier for my food processor, which is my next tool I'd like to show you. This 
is the food processor that I have been using for a year. Uh, I had been using a small, regular Cuisinart food processor prior to that. And again, if you have dogs that have perfectly great teeth, especially if you have larger, or medium, or large sized dogs, they love to chew through all the meat and you do won't necessarily, especially if you have ground meat, you won't necessarily need to use a food processor. Just make sure you mash up those vegetables real good because they don't have the right teeth to be doing that. But usually most of the vegetables get kind of mushy anyway in the crock pot. And you want to be able to mix it well enough to get any of the vitamin and mineral supplements you're going to put into the food, get it well incorporated so that you don't want anybody to have any like, too much or any yucky taste from, from the supplements. At least I wouldn't want that if it, if it were me. Okay, so I have a lot of food in this crock pot. And as you probably noticed, as with human food, there's a lot more juice in here than what we started with, with the little bit of bone broth that we put in there. All the juices from the meats and vegetables have now given, given your food a nice broth. And we'll be using every bit of it so we get all the nutrients that came out of the meats and vegetables. So I flip mine into two batches because I have so much food in here and I have a large container that I'll put it in at the end. Again, you're gonna want to make sure that you have enough food for three to four days to put in your refrigerator. And then uh, any amount kind of over that that's gonna be in the refrigerator more than four or five days, just like with human food, you're gonna wanna probably freeze any extra so that it doesn't go bad. This batch will usually last me three days, and so that's perfect for me and my five dogs. I'm gonna literally split this batch in half. You'll hear some of my dogs start to come over because they know that when this process has started, they're going to usually have a brand new meal. As I mentioned when we were doing this earlier, I use a good mineral and vitamin supplement for my dogs. And that's similar to what we do when we take our own vitamin and mineral supplement. It's just to ensure that we have the best of what we need. And uh, this just ensures that, especially a mineral supplement, I think that's even more critical. And when I've been talking to my vets, and listening to the, some of the holistic vets I follow, minerals seem to be more critical even than the vitamins, but I do both just to be on the safe side. For this batch, I'm also going to be using a kelp supplement. Kelp is a great supplement, and I give it to all five of my dogs, so it's something that I can add directly into the batch. It boosts their immune system. It also keeps their coats nice and shiny, prevents them from being itchy or having any flaky skin. It's a natural source of fatty acids. It promotes healthy gut and digestion. Also, it supports gland function and the health of their thyroid. And it's just an overall good source of vitamin, minerals, and enzymes as well. This is mushroom extract powder. It supports immunity, cognition, and adaptation. Again, I will link these supplements up below and up in the resource section as well. As I'm getting this in here, who out there are my label makers? I am a crazy labeler, so you guys will likely see that some of my things, either I've written on them with a permanent marker, some of the supplements, or I love my label maker. I was with my husband in a Home Depot several years ago and just came across this label maker and I was like, I I think I could do fun things with this. And so now a lot of things in my house are labeled. My kids all make fun of me. My husband makes fun of me as well, but I think they all know that it kind of keeps me sane and keeps me organized. And so, I don't know, there's just something fun about having something I need to label. So I have leftovers, I'm labeling with them with my label maker. So I have a fill marker on my food processor. So I'm just making sure that it's pretty uneven in here, but um, that this is not going to overflow. I'm also going to make sure that I have enough liquid in here so that it doesn't have a hard time pureeing all this wonderful food. It's funny, when I was cooking this earlier, my husband came home and said, oh, what are you making us? So it does smell just like, kind of like a pot roast. Sometimes the liver it has got kind of a stronger scent that sometimes my daughter doesn't always appreciate when she's home. For the most part, this smells pretty darn good. Okay, so let me grab some of my other ingredients that we're gonna add into this batch of food. Since I'm dividing this into two, I'm going to kind of half all of my extra ingredients. Um, again, some of these are optional. I almost always put my pumpkin in to every batch, and that's really because it's super good for the poop of our dogs. If your dogs have loose stools, 
it'll kind of firm them up. And if they have too hard of stools, it kind of loosens them up. So it's kind of a miracle. It's great for us as well as humans. So again, I am not afraid to use it when it's good for us. All right, so I've got a half a can of pumpkin in here. And then next I'm gonna to get to mineral supplement. Again, this is a canine, so it's made specifically for canines. What I've done is I've determined how much all the dogs would need in three days worth of food. And then I've just given myself a note, not labeled, but it's written on the top of the, the container. And that helps me and my husband when he feeds the dogs as well. So I know that I'm gonna need 10 to 12 uh, scoops per batch. I just go ahead and split that up. Um, and I'm gonna show you a little easy tip. Again, we're making this as simple as we can. So on the top of my food processor, it comes with this cute little cup. We are going to use this for this part right here. I'm going to take the handy uh, scoop in here and I'm going to put five of them in here and we'll use that for the second batch. And then also you can do this when the food processor is running. Um, so sometimes I'll, I'll have the top on and I'll just put it through the hole in the top. But for today's demonstration, so I'm not running it super loud, I'm just going to do it this way. So pop it here. And you can find this on Amazon, which is super convenient because I have it on a subscribe and I save some money doing it that way. Subscribe and save with Amazon works really well for me. That's the canine minerals. And then I'm also going to do the same with my RX Essentials for Dogs. It's a high potency multivitamin supplement. And again, I've written on the top what I need to do. This has a different size scoop, but there are 10 per batch that I need for this as well. So I'm going to measure that out here and do a better job of counting. So there's three, four, and five. Keep in mind, I am cooking for three days for five dogs. So this is definitely not gonna be the amount that you would use if you have just one or two dogs, which most normal people just have a couple dogs. So I don't know what that says about us, but I think it just does great things because we absolutely love our little dogs. And I'm so excited for you to meet them all. And then we'll get into the other supplements I talked about, which was the kelp and the mushroom. This is the mushroom supplement. And this one requires five of these scoops per batch. So about a half to do three and one and two and the other. It's kind of like a chemistry class, right? Super fun. I've got all my dogs now laying around here. So they're all like, hey, she's she's making our favorite thing. So they're gonna all hang out and make sure if I drop any, which I am known to be a little bit klutzy. So they all know that about me and they come around and get all excited and listen for that sound of me dropping stuff. So again, this one is labeled as well. I need six of these per batch. So I'm gonna put three in for the second batch and then three in. Okay, so one thing that I do get questioned a lot on is where are the carbs, where are the starches for this recipe? Don't you need rice or quinoa or something amazing in this recipe? Well, no, we don't. There are some people that feed their dog, they put some what I would call fillers in there. I've just not had good luck with that. I do have one dog that's pretty sensitive to starches, and so he's been on a completely grain-free diet for most of his life, I would say, since we had him about six months old. We found out that that was causing him all sorts of gastric issues. And dogs in the wild really weren't eating too much rice or grains of any kind. Again, I put a little veg in here. We all know that the dogs love to eat the grass and things like that, but just not carbs. Again, I like to keep my dogs real healthy with their weights and this has done that for me. Okay, so I got it plugged in and we are going to tighten everything up. This on. And then even though this is filled with the supplements for the next batch, it sits in here just fine. Make sure nothing gets out. And then I pulse this a couple times just to get everything initially started. And then I let it whirl. 
Now, some of you may be asking yourselves, why is she pureeing the food? That seems like an extra step that maybe isn't necessary. And again, if you've got dogs with great teeth and like to kind of crunch through the meat, especially if it's a ground meat when it starts out, then by all means, you can skip this step and just mix it all real good with the supplements, or you can use these supplements per bowl. So you can sprinkle a little bit over each bowl. They have um, a scoop in there and you measure the scoop based on the pounds of your dog. So you can definitely do it that way. I have a dog that almost has no teeth. I think she has three left. She is one of my King Charles Cavalier Spaniels. Molly has kind of a lot of things going on. She came from a puppy mill. It was a little bit of a mess. She's great now from a health perspective. You can't fix teeth that weren't there. So she's got about three teeth left and she's also deaf. Again, that's another kind of ongoing condition with Cavaliers. So she's no different. So she's our little deaf dog. She has no stress. It's amazing what happens when dogs can't hear. But she would inhale food whether it was period or not, that is something that concerns me. So I do have slow feed bowls for all my dogs because they love this food so much that I have to make sure that they keep it slowed down so that they, it aids in their digestion and is, is good for them. That's why I puree to the level that I do. Mine comes out literally like almost like a canned food, but a little bit wetter than that. You do as much as, as you need to for your dogs. Do what's best for your dogs. At the end of the day, all of that matters is the ingredients, right? These are fresh, whole food ingredients and that's what our dogs need. It doesn't matter. Do as much as you need to and then if you don't need to do this part, man, then you cut down like another five minutes off the process. Let me finish this zipping through this and we'll kind of skip ahead and you see what I do next. Okay, and the last ingredient I need to add to this batch is my wild blueberries. So I put this in almost every batch unless I forget or I run out. And this would be the time where I'd also put in those cranberries if I was going to be putting cranberries in. I don't put cranberries in every batch. They have some sugar in them and while they're good for them, I don't think they need them every time. I also add other kind of small amounts of things like if I have a red pepper, I'll put in a little bit of red pepper in there. I'll put a little bit of kale if I have it, especially in the summer when I'm growing my own garden. I tend to give them a lot, little bit more variety, but I don't like to put some all of those things in every bath. I do keep those cruciferous vegetables as the base, but I don't always include all those ingredients. So I am going to be very scientist to pull out blueberries and not measure them, <laughs> but it would be about a cup. Again, I have five dogs, so it would be a lot less for you. I would say if you have small dogs, they say that six to nine little blueberries a day is really healthy for them. And so, you know, that's really what you need to do. I've always just kind of sprinkled some on top. And then because this is still a little bit warm, it'll warm those frozen blueberries up and we'll give it another whirl. Okay, it looks like my batch is ready. It's got its blueberries, which gives it kind of a gray haze, but that's okay. It's still really yummy. The, the pumpkin kind of gives it an orange tinge to it, and then I put the blueberries in it, and it kind of comes out a little bit grayer, but it all smells amazing. And so we're going to now put this into my container. I use a large plastic container. I've tried to use glass because I do worry sometimes with plastic, but this is cooled off, so it's not going to be hot food in my plastic container. And just when I had the glass container, it was so heavy between the food and the glass that I was having a really hard time getting it out of my fridge without kind of dropping it. My glass just seems to be a little bit slipperier. For now, I'm back to my plastic wear, but I don't heat the food in here. And so uh, I feel pretty confident that this is good for my pets as well. I literally just then scoop this or pour this in and you guys can see the consistency of this. And then my second batch will go on top so if it were feeding time now, I would be getting this ready for them and putting this in their bowls, but it's not feeding time. So I will make sure this is totally cool, which it feels totally cool, and then put it in the refrigerator and I'll pull it out later. Let me show you a great tip on how to actually portion out your dog food. I have one of these. It's a large scoop. I'm going to put the recommended amount that you would have based on how many pounds your dog weighs in the resource section below. And what I did is I took a food scale and I scooped up a level amount. So a level amount like this, and then I plopped it onto the food scale, determined how much that weighed. And then I, once I knew how much my dog was supposed to eat, be eating per meal, I feed my dogs twice a day, I'm able to then easily determine, do I need two scoops to make up that amount or three scoops, whatever it is based on the size of your dogs. I have three kind of 15 pound Cavaliers and then I have two labs that are about 45 pounds each. Very different amounts 
for each of those dogs, but just a quick tip and it's something that keeps it off my hands. I really enjoy using this scoop. All right, so this process took about another five or 10 minutes and we are done. We have now completely spoiled our lovely pets with some great homemade healthy food for them. I'm gonna continue letting my family and friends think that I spend all this time in the kitchen cooking for my dogs, just slaving over the, the hot stove for my dogs. But you guys now know the secret that it's really kind of a 10 minute process to get it all put together and then another 10 minute process to puree it and make it ready for the dogs. You're in on my secret. If you would, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear how cooking for your dogs has made an impact on your life and the health of your dog. Even if it's not my recipe and you're doing something great for your dog, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to see pictures of your dogs. Anything that you want to share with me, I'd love to see it. All right, so let's see what our furry friends think about the meal. Does this look good? I think they're interested. Thanks for joining me today. I'll continue to create videos about the health of our pets and what things we can do to continue to improve their health. I look forward to creating those videos for you and I will see you along my Jetastic journey. I hope that this brings your journey joy as well. Until then. If you found today's video helpful, please click the like button. It seriously helps my channel. Also subscribe as I create new content weekly that I look forward to sharing with you. My content also includes other hobbies and adventures that bring joy to life, such as engaging creatively through crafting cards and enjoying the thrill of travel as we explore the United States in our Airstream with our five dogs. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.